I will be the first to admit that I ignored red flags that I saw even on the very first date. But once the love goggles came off, I was finally able to see them for what they were. Hi, I'm Lillian Fallon, the author of Theology of Style, Expressing the Unique and Unrepeatable You. And this is Ascension Presents. I might be an author, but I'm also a single Catholic woman. So trust me when I say I've encountered a few red flags in my day. So today we're gonna to be talking about exactly that, which is how you can identify a red flag. How did I get here? You might find yourself asking as you stand in the ashes of your relationship. Chances are, if you are asking this question, you might have missed a few red flags as you were speeding through the honeymoon phase of your relationship. And now as you're cleaning up the wreckage of what could have been, you're starting to look back and thinking, hmm, there's a couple things I missed. Well, what does a red flag even look like? My first tip is to catch that questioning thought that you might have before it disappears. And what I mean by that is a lot of the time when we're out on a first date, second or third date, when we're talking with that person or we're spending time with them, something that they do or say might cause us to think, huh, wait a minute, hmm, I don't know if I like that. It could be that they were mean to the server at the restaurant. It could be that they're not actually asking you any questions or they're completely dominating the conversation. It could be that they made a physical advance that made you feel a little uncomfortable or maybe they expressed something about their values that you're like, wait a minute, I don't know if we're on the same page about that. Hold on to that thought and now try and filter that through whether this is a red flag, a deal breaker or being picky. A red flag doesn't necessarily mean that this person is completely hopeless. Sometimes we'll get a little red flag and we're like, hmm, okay, it doesn't mean that you're grabbing your coat and you're storming out the door because how could they not like the office? <laughs> but a deal breaker is something that has, is an intrinsic incompatibility. So say that they have completely different values or that there's a value that you're really passionate about. Maybe you're adamantly pro-life and they're adamantly pro-choice. That might be something where you have to say, okay, wait a minute, this actually might be a deal breaker. On the other hand, being picky is something a little different. So say you're having a conversation and your connection with the person is really great, but maybe they're just a little bit awkward, or maybe they're like a little quirky in their taste, or maybe they're not exactly your physical type, your dream type. If there is the fundamental compatibility and the connection and the chemistry there, that is something that you can learn to actually embrace and love who they are, even in all of their quirkiness or their awkwardness, and that's something that you can actually work through. So there is a difference between a deal breaker and being picky. So try and determine which one of those you're identifying when you're noticing a red flag. My second tip for identifying a red flag is to listen to your body. Our guts are the very first thing that notify us when there's potential danger. This is actually especially felt amongst women. We have incredible gut intuition. But sometimes before your brain or your thoughts even know that something's a little bit off, your stomach is going to tell you first. Your gut's gonna tell you first. So listen to that feeling when it arises and engage with it. Again, it doesn't have to be something where you're saying, okay, I feel a little bit uncomfortable. I'm getting this like, gut feeling, and I'm not talking about butterflies. Butterflies should be a good thing, but if you kind of feel sick to your stomach when you're engaging with this person or even thinking about a future with them, take a pause and ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? And what is the source of this feeling? Try to identify what it was that they did or they said, or maybe their actions that are making you feel uneasy and like maybe this isn't a safe relationship for you. Tip number three, identify whether you're dating potential. The reason why many of us ignore red flags is because we are dating potential. So we see that they have all the ingredients and that if they only just got it together, they would be the most perfect man and they'd be the best husband. The problem with that is 
that we're oftentimes projecting onto that person an idealized image or an idealization of who we want them to be or who we think they should be. And it's not actually who they are right there in that moment. So when you date somebody, ask yourself, is this person somebody who I can see myself getting married to as they are? Or do I, am I kind of viewing them as a fixer upper and I'm gonna try and chip and Joanna Gaines them and make them into who I want them to be. And ultimately that's just really not fair to them because you're not really seeing them for who they are and even really accepting them for who they are in that moment. And sometimes accepting somebody for who they are is deciding, hey, I don't think that we're a good match and I'm gonna walk away from this. Remember that you are not trying to save your date. And when you're in a relationship with somebody, it should be two people who are focused on Christ and becoming better people with each other and who are helping each other, not one person helping the other. So don't try to fix anybody in a relationship. It's not your job to save them. It's Jesus' job to save them. If you're dating somebody and you're noticing significant red flags, you might both be interested in each other and you're trying to achieve that common goal of a relationship, but you actually end up passing each other because the red flags that you notice in the beginning, especially if they're egregious red flags, are just things that are gonna ultimately drive you further apart and cause you a lot more heartbreak because you didn't address them earlier on in the relationship or even just walk away from the relationship before it got to the point where you were really enmeshed and entangled with each other. So do yourself a favor by taking the time to ask, like, what are the red flags here? What are some issues that I might need to look at and walk away from or some things that are workable? When it comes to a relationship, you wanna have compatibility. And a lot of the times we ignore red flags because we're heavily basing the relationship on chemistry and good vibes that we share with that person and hoping that those little kinks will just kind of figure themselves out, smooth out, and then you won't have to like think about them again. The thing with red flags is that they usually have their root in extreme incompatibility, something that will come up later down the road and actually be a reason to break up potentially. So the sooner you identify what those red flags are, the more you can one, walk away, or two, address them with that person, voice them, share what your concerns are, and then either decide if that's something that you're gonna work on together or it's something that you don't wanna work on together and end the relationship then. Either way, it's important to bring them up, communicate with that person so that you're on the same page and it can save you both from a lot of heartbreak or it could lead to a really successful relationship. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you like and subscribe, but also leave a comment and let us know what you consider to be a red flag or not. If you like this content, consider buying my book, Theology of Style, Expressing the Unique and Unrepeatable You, or following me on Instagram at Lillian underscore Fallon.